Däck och följare online direkt hem till din dörr eller närmaste verkstad. Well, it's like a PDK or a uh, double clutch gearbox. Check these brakes. Now this is not just a lame touring bike, you know, with mild performance. This has a lot of performance, 160 horsepower, six cylinder engine, and you get 185 newton meters of torque. And this electronic intake pipe injection, digital engine management system, BMS O, with throttle by wire, you can't feel any vibration at all. Doesn't matter if you're in a very high gear at lower speeds. Pull the throttle and it's just vibration free. And also weighing 350 kilos plus, this machine acts like it's a smaller sports bike. It's incredible how you can throw it from one side to the other on those small, narrow, curvy roads. And on small roads like these, it feels super nimble. It really manages all the complexities in the road with ease, both for you and your passenger. And by sitting high on a bike, that always makes it more secure because you can see things earlier super comfortable bike you know i like the sound of the engine it's got that whining type of sound it feels alive and it's very impressive how quickly you can change direction and put it down you know i don't think that any sport sport can match this just a joy and when it starts to be a bit more worrying a road surface it handles it with joy yeah a bit hard there you can drive in sixth gear with that powerful torque bmw motorrad they have a palette of so many bikes a bike for everyone now but they're quality products and they're so well built and it has really sunken into me that I think it also looks very, very good. This is the GTL version with a lot of bags. You can get the bagger version, then you just get the bags and you don't get this uh, backrest for your passenger. There is also an uh, Grand America, some speakers and some other stuff on it. But some other stuff on it, you got everything you need here. So much stuff standard on this bike that you wouldn't believe would be possible. 10 years ago. You got very good storage for your um, sunshades down here. If you want to get some fresh air into the uh, cockpit, then you can just open these and these are very good. You push them in and the wind goes around and you pull them out and you get that wind right onto your body to cool down a little. Very smart. Been having two passengers that have been uh, ridden this and they've said the same thing. It's almost like riding in a car because it's so big, it's so sophisticated, and it's so smooth. But you get the wind and all the elements around you as you do in a motorcycle, and you sit rather high. So you have a very great vision all around, and of course, a backrest. It's very easy to open these bags. You can have a uh, full face helmet in place here. Back here, you can have two helmets and it's also very nice with this cloth all around here. So it's a bit luxurious in the way it feels and looks back here. So storage is just great. This 10.22 inch TFT display, which has super graphics. It's quick. It's just as responsive as in any of their cars. You got cruise control, there's speakers, heated seats, heated grips, central locking for all your casing, keyless go, a little storage where you can connect your phone so you get your navigation. You need to uh, put this windshield up in its uh, raised position. That's also something, you know, to get the wind away from you. You just push that up and you have a bit more of a cockpit in here. Reverse, so you can reverse the bike. This little handle here, you change the uh, volume, push it from side to side and you get your onboard computer, your navigation trip computer, you change your stations, you change your track and you got the ride modes. You got rain, road and dynamic. Road is super soft. The setting and the springs, they are very, very lean 
and it just flows over some uneven surface. So that's where you want to go when you want to cruise. Rain is when the power isn't that immediate and the torque is a bit more lean. So uh, you don't start to slide if you would accelerate too hard. But push it into dynamic and you get this M feeling almost because the sharpness and the response of this engine is just perfect and the sound is just great when you start to rev it up all the way to 8500 rpm and the power of 160 horsepower comes in 1000 rpm earlier than on the previous version so it's a bit sharpened up this one maybe you could chase some sports bike but um, it's not like it will uh, catch them really but it feels like it does and for being a touring bike I don't think there is something comparable to this one in this segment. This is extremely sharp in that area. And Hill Start Control Pro, because if you'd like to start uphill, well, you will be thankful for that one, because it is heavy. It's very balanced when you're standing with it, but as soon as you have someone on it, depending on the weight of that passenger, you need to keep your balance. You need to keep it on the roll. Because if this tips over, well, then you need to uh, have some people around that can uh, pull it up together with you because it is heavy. But what adds another level to that dynamic and this sport attribute that this bike has is that Gear Shift Assist Pro. You don't use your clutch because the ECU reads out how much power you give it and then you just shift it. So driving like that, well, it makes you focus a lot more on the type of road you're on and what curve to take instead of always playing around with the clutch. I never like windscreens really. I always want to have that air straight on me. But you can set this in um, different heights. Yeah, it gets a bit quieter. It's pretty good on a cruiser, it fits. The only thing is that when you have it set in its lowest position, I think this little, this little edge here, the end of that window or screen, it takes some attention. You either want to look above it, and then it's in the middle, and it's in the middle if you want to lean down a bit and drive sporty, but you don't lean on a bike like this. A little bit distorted when you need to look through that window. Even though we're in sixth gear, it feels like the engine is a bit stressed it's a bit you know high pitched would like to have it a bit quieter in that sixth gear so that could be a bit more of an over gear just because this is a cruiser but the sound it is rather sporty and it's uh, agile and it feels like well it want to take you on a sporty touring ride which this really really can and when you want to pick up speed wow there's no vibrations at all. It's almost as comfortable as a car, this one. Because on a bike, you want some vibrations from that engine, but on a sport tour, well, you shouldn't. And here is none, in my opinion. And it doesn't get intimidating at all, so you just wanna keep on pushing. Sometimes on many bikes, when you start pushing and you feel the wind and all of that, that drama of being exposed to the wind when the speed increases, on this one, you just keep on going. You just push that throttle. You don't pull off because you think that, whoops, it's a bit wobbly and a uh, bit too much wind. Great acceleration, no drama, just comfort straight through. Very impressive. You get six gears, it's shaft drive. The top speed is 200 kilometers plus. I think you can push it uh, way beyond 220 if you want. Like these uh, mufflers, very elegant, but at the back they look very sporty with these three outlets on each of the muffler. Looks very elegant. You can get it in some different colors, but I think that in black, it looks rather hardcore in the touring class. And you get on it easily push this keyless go this sound which um, 
I like, I think it's sporty. It's a bit too on its toes, like very agile. So uh, when you just roll and when you roll in sixth gear, I think it's a bit too high tone on it. I would like to have a more of an overdrive gear on sixth gear or seventh gear. But when you get into uh, dynamic mode, then, uh, then it sounds really, really good. Dynamic. The curvy roads. And the brakes are so strong. I can't believe how well they work. They are phenomenal, these brakes. Oh, very impressive, very impressive indeed. And on a big bike like this, you just want good brakes. And that gear shift assist pro, well, it's like a PDK or a uh, double clutch gearbox. And I like the sound as you start being a bit more aggressive with your driving style. It really suits it. Gradually pulls up and you can rev it all the way out to 8,500 RPM. Together with this comfort and this ride quality that is, well, I think among the best, if not the best. We need to compare it, of course. I'm being a bit colored here right now by this bike. Your confidence just races to another level because you can push on a bit harder. You know that the brakes are there. They're so easy to dose and to set in right. And the overall balance of how you want to put it feels like a smaller sports bike. And if you want to interact with all of the gadgets and stuff, you do that, but they don't bother you otherwise. And the seats, they are so plush and nice, very comfortable. At the same time, they don't become too soft, but you can go for very long distances before you get some butt ache from these ones. You sit rather upright, but you know, you can lean forward if you want to go a bit more sporty and your legs, they are in a very good position. So it's very relaxing on this bike. And it's also very nice to have that little lower back backrest for you as a driver. Marvelous bike, this one. Wow, I really like it. And this makes me feel like I could easily own this one, even though my mind says that a motorcycle should be naked, you have no ABS, it should be, you know, not that super technical. Because it should be you and machine and that type of freedom. But, you know, when you have all of this, you become a bit more free because you don't need to uh, worry that much and think that much about how to put it, how to balance it, how to maneuver the clutch and all of this. You become much more effective with all these things. And I just think it's a treat. Wow, I really made something with this one. And then you can have a passenger that sits very comfortable. You can get some options, you know, like an armrest for your passenger so it becomes even more comfortable. But they're fine back there. The responsiveness of this engine, especially in dynamic, almost electric in some way. So after a couple of days of driving this bike, I just find it fantastic because I never thought that a touring bike could grab my senses and give me that much pleasure and butterflies like this K1600 has done. It's remarkable. It's got all this great comfort, but at the same time, a more playful side, smaller sport bike type of agility, which is rather hard to grasp considering its weight and that it's high. So it ticks a lot of boxes, this one. This is not just a touring bike, which is aimed to go straight for miles and miles and miles. This one teases you with going off to some different types of roads, which most touring bikes are not meant to do. My conclusion for this one right now is that it's an excellent machine.